this is a building that's going to be here for hundreds, a thousand years is what we're going for. Anybody at all who has stone in the name of their company, we called. And I said, I want to build a stone building. They said, you can't do that. We don't know how to do that anymore. It's a story of perseverance and just sticking with our path. Our hearts kept bringing us back to that vision. And then I remember those words and I go out at night and I look up at this building and I said, yes, you can. Our whole day is focused on our Lord Jesus Christ. And everything that we do throughout the day is centered upon Him, is done for Him, is with Him in mind. The Carmelites are cloistered, which practically speaking means they live their entire life behind enclosure walls. Their job is to be silent in a world that doesn't stop talking. We're on this earth because we're trying to get as many people with us to heaven, and each one of us has a part to play in that mission. We need to be hidden because we need to enter into a relationship with God that is He and I. The Carmelite Charism is very specifically to pray for the Church and her priests. That is the entire foundation of their order. To see their holiness, their humility, and their love has changed my life for the better over and over and over again. They, to me, are a great gift from God in my life. In a world that's very noisy, in a world that is constantly screaming about something, and then you get here, and there's peace, and there's purpose and that enables them to spend their entire life as what they are meant to do, which is to pray. physical manifestation of their prayer life are the walls, the actual stone walls around them. The monastery that we're building now is in order to make that mission of ours happen. All of the nuns and the mothers that said, if we, we're going to build a monastery, let's do it right. Let's do it the way that St. Teresa of Avila would have built her monasteries. We live in a huge country, there's a ton of stonemasons, but the nuns were told no for the first three years. And the nuns, being resourceful, they said, no, we're not gonna take no for an answer. We know it can be done. It was a real challenge and it was quite difficult because we needed to now find people who would be able to embrace this same vision that we had for the monastery. Mother and I just looked at each other and said, all right, Let's just try and just call one person after the other. We literally just had to just open up the phone book, just run our finger down, down names. Then I go down to the next one, and it would often be this kind of, I don't think that's a good idea. You can't build a stone building. And then it's kind of click, okay, you have to go down to the next person. Mother and I, would, we would go and say, are we crazy? Are we just completely out of our minds? And, and then slowly, it began to happen. You gotta be careful what you pray for, what you say in church. I was in the cathedral before mass, and I guess I had a look on my face. My wife was, what's wrong? And I told her that I'll never get to build anything like this. And she said, oh, don't say that, don't say that. And I said, no, you don't understand. If they built this today, this would be a steel building, and we would just wrap stone facade around them. And so when Mother Therese called me the next week, it kind of like made the hair on the back of my neck stand up a little bit. I instantly fell in love with the project. 
everyone's telling her you can't do it. People don't build this way anymore. And to think that you can't, won't, shouldn't, or couldn't seem kind of ridiculous to me. She explained that as she's forming the interior life of the novices, it's just as important that your interior is reflected through your exterior. So she said, if it looks like a stone wall, it needs to be a stone wall. I can only talk to the novices a half hour a day, an hour a day, uh, but this building can talk to them 24 seven. This building can teach them about stability, can teach them about fidelity, can teach them about authenticity in a way that a human voice um, just doesn't doesn't communicate. The perception of permanence from the stone structures communicates a sense of eternity. You know, the sisters have their eyes set on eternity. And so, you know, what expresses more the idea of eternity than structures that are permanent and enduring and stand the test of time? They want it to last a long time. They want it to be here for a thousand years and still rust. And I can't take you to a thousand year old steel building and show it to you. This was a mandate from mother from the beginning. Nothing artificial, nothing fake. All of the walls are load bearing masonry walls. The oil on the wood is tongue oil. The paint is a, a milk paint or a lime wash. We're fabricating the doors and windows with no screws, no nails, no glue, because nails rust and glue fails. So everything has to be wood pegs, mortise and tenon joinery. I call it mother's thousand year spec. I kept repeating over and over to the architects, it's not just the obvious places that should be beautiful. I want the janitor rooms to be beautiful. I want the back pantry to be beautiful. Sometimes the beauty of the utilitarian spaces can be as important as the, the spaces where we pray. And so we have to remember that so God is not relegated to uh, one space. Beauty is formative. And when you build beautiful things, they form you, they do. The vision that mother and the sisters have been pushing is one of rebuilding, rebuilding society through prayer. Every detail has that vision in mind. When people see that up on the top of this hill, they know it's there, they're gonna to want to imitate it. And that's how monasteries did change society. I don't think I'll ever be the same stonemason I once was, or father, or husband, or Christian. It's a type of project that definitely changes a person for the better. Yeah, it's a difficult, Yes, you know, anything worth doing is, you know, it's not going to be easy. There's a sense of joy here and purpose. It becomes contagious. I have been here for a few years now, and I have yet to figure out a way to describe it to somebody. There's nothing that I can do that conjures the emotions that you feel when you come to a place like this. It's exciting and it's beautiful. You feel very much like you're part of something much bigger than yourself. We have not built this way in this country for over a hundred years. We can do this. We have the crews, we have the construction plan, we have our architect and we have our builder. We just need the help.